One hundred years ago, a school dedicated to the liberal arts was born. And ever since, Penn State's College of the Liberal Arts has been building on tradition and shaping the future. The college founders believed that scientific agriculture must include a sound basic education with mathematics, English, and moral and intellectual philosophy. 119 students were enrolled at Penn State in 1859. By the turn of the century, enrollment had grown to 500. As liberal arts became increasingly important, Penn State's first modern president, Edwin Earl Sparks, decided to merge mathematics with the School of Language and Literature and the School of History, Political Science and Philosophy to form the new School of Liberal Arts in 1909. Early in its history, the college assumed a national leadership role in teaching and research. Fred Louis Petit pioneered the new field of American literature and wrote lyrics for what is now the official alma mater of Penn State. Great American literature aside, Petit often had to assign English composition papers on subjects like barnyard manure versus commercial fertilizer in order to teach spelling and grammar to young students. Ground was broken for a permanent home for the college in 1913 and two years later the voices of young men and a few young women rang through the halls of what is now the south wing of Sparks Building. 1918 brought Lucretia Van Tool Simmons to head the German department and be Dean of Women. Van Tool Simmons was a steadfast promoter of women's education at the university and paved the way for generations of female students who followed. 1921 graduate Herman Fisher would go on to create one of the best known toy companies in the United States, Fisher Price Toys. While much of the country suffered the ill effects of the Great Depression, Penn State experienced rising enrollment and Sparks Building was expanded with two additional wings. Our liberal arts home has served us well ever since. English professor Julia Gregg Brill launched her career as a lifelong advocate for women faculty, students, and alumni, continuing the work Simmons had started two decades earlier. The question, do you daydream frequently, was part of a personality test developed by psychology professor Robert Bernruter. This personality inventory is still widely used today. Here's looking at you, kid. One of the many famous lines in the Academy Award winning film Casablanca, penned by 1931 alumnus Julius Epstein. World War II changed the world and radically changed life at Penn State. While it brought hundreds of young men to the campus for specialized Officer Canada training programs, regular enrollment fell by half to barely 3,000 because the war drew thousands of Penn Staters to battle. Many did not return. Lieutenant W. Garfield Thomas, Jr., class of 1938, was one of the first alums to give up his life during the war. He received the Navy Cross and the Garfield Thomas Water Tunnel on campus was named in his honor. 1943 graduate Milt Dolinger signed up for the U.S. Army and finished his degree early. His stories about the 88th Infantry Division fighting in Italy earned him the Bronze Star. In later years, Milt will champion the college with the slogan, Liberal Arts Can Take You Everywhere. With the war's end, the School of Liberal Arts was poised for a new era. Enrollment at University Park steadily climbed to over 11,000 students by 1949. 1941 Arts and Letters graduate Jean Craighead George would write the Newbery Medal winning Julie of the Wolves and many other beloved books for children and is still writing books at 90. The 50s ushered in an era of Elvis Presley and poodle skirts, the Cold War and Marilyn Monroe, and a groundswell of activity on campus. Penn State hired new faculty and staff as fast as they could be found, and administrators assigned freshmen to other campuses and colleges throughout the state. Temporary structures, 
ease space shortages in classrooms, offices, and dormitories. In 1953, the Pennsylvania State College became a university and the School of Liberal Arts became a college. Among the inspiring faculty in the classroom was political scientist Ruth Silva. Ruth challenged her students, many of them aspiring lawyers, with stern critiques about their papers. Historian Ken Forster used his collection of miniature soldiers to help teach European history and urged his students to see beyond the hills of Pennsylvania. He also directed Penn State's first European summer seminar in 1950. Novelist Joseph Heller nurtured the seed of Catch-22 in 242 Sparks Building amidst correcting freshman English composition papers. The Penn State campus also reverberated with echoes of the civil rights movement spreading across the U.S. Like those at universities nationwide, liberal arts students were speaking out against racism, the Vietnam War, and later against sexism. Faculty in the 1960s developed new courses in African American studies and women's studies, and their efforts have led to full departments today. As the Vietnam War dragged on, William Diker expanded our knowledge of East Asia and later wrote the first comprehensive biography of Vietnamese leader Ho Chi Minh. English scholar Phil Young analyzed the works of novelist Ernest Hemingway in groundbreaking research. Sociology professor Margaret Matson led efforts to integrate study abroad programs into the student experience. The forces of globalization started to become evident at Penn State in the 70s as the college welcomed students from around the world. 1975 alumnus Jigme Tinley received his master's degree in public administration to serve in his native Bhutan, where today he is prime minister. The college has long been a catalyst for new knowledge. In the 1980s, research became an integral part of the college's mission. Psychology professor Herschel Leibowitz pioneered the study of causes of human error in accidents related to human vision and perception. Anthropology professor Paul Baker initiated the field of biological anthropology and human population biology, a field where our department is an international leader today. In 1991, Susan Welch became the ninth dean of the college and launched a campaign for the college to join the top tier of liberal arts colleges in the nation. Football coach Joe Paterno, who has been a great friend of the college, said, if we don't have a great liberal arts college, we will never have a great university. A new emphasis on hiring distinguished senior faculty strengthened many of its core programs. Building on the dean's leadership and the philanthropy of loyal alums, many departments and programs rose to rank in the top 20 or higher. More prominent faculty, such as Baruch Halpern, Michael Berube, Dwayne Alwyn, Nancy Tuwana, and Neil Wallace, would join the college, heighten its national reputation, and enrich the lives of our students. Today, Evelyn Pugh Professor Alan Walker, the co-discoverer of several million-year-old human ancestors in Africa, continues his groundbreaking work in anthropology. Pulitzer Prize-winning historian Mark Neely writes about constitutional and political issues surrounding Abraham Lincoln in the Civil War era. Once in a long while, we find ourselves touched by heroes. 1991 political science honors graduate Michael Murphy took a different path from his classmates. He joined the Navy SEALs, but during a mission in Afghanistan in 2005, he lost his life saving his comrades. He is Penn State's only Medal of Honor winner. Another political science alumnus and Penn State distinguished alumni, John Stanford, would retire as a U.S. Army Major General but assume command of the Seattle School District. As superintendent, he would make many important reforms in the school district and become known as the Children's Crusader. In the 21st century, the college is continuing its journey toward the top among its peers. 
aided by alumni philanthropy, the Richard Civil War Era Center is leading the scholarship on the Civil War Era and Americans' ongoing search for civil rights. The Rock Ethics Institute is uniquely tackling a wide variety of topics ranging from climate change ethics to developing young people's ethical awareness. The college now has more than a hundred thousand graduates and many have given back to ensure that the next generation of students has an equally great education. As supporters and mentors, thousands of alumni and friends have made a monumental impact on the college, its faculty, and the undergraduate and graduate students. Renowned physicist Isaac Newton once wrote, If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. We continue to stand on the shoulders of everyone who has swelled the fame of Penn State. Our students, our faculty, and our alumni will continue to question, explore, and lead a great community of discovery. They have all shaped the future for tomorrow and the next 100 years.